Hi everyone, it's Miss STEM Tutor here, where we try to get that 100. Today, we're going to talk about how to solve limits algebraically. Don't worry, in this video, we're going to talk about how to do so and with a lot of examples. All right, let's get into it right away. So how do we evaluate limits, right? What are the steps? Number one, we always have to substitute the value into the limiting expression first. And you know, when we're lucky, we immediately just get a number. Right. But a lot of times that is not the case. We might get something that looks like this where it's zero over zero. Right. When that happens, that means that there is a value to this limit. It's just that we can't find it through substitution. In that case, we have to like try to factor conjugate. Overall, we just have to simplify so we can get a value. Second, where you get number over zero. That is where you have a positive negative infinity. Right. Or it does not exist. And third case scenario, we have something that looks like this, you know, zero times infinity, infinity over infinity, or infinity minus infinity, you know, it looks really complex. But don't worry, this is the indeterminate form. And to find the value, we just have to manipulate. Do not worry, we will go over an example about this. So what if it's indeterminate, right, when it looks like zero over zero? Like, what do you do about it? First, we can try to factor, right? Look at this question. Limit as x approaches to x squared plus x minus 6 over x squared minus 4. So first, remember, we always plug in the value, right? 2 into this equation. 2 squared is 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0 on top. And then 2 squared minus 4 on the bottom. 4 minus 4 is 0. So that is indeterminate. Then we start to factor, right? Look at it. It's x squared, x squared. We probably can factor it. We factor it into x plus 3 times x minus 2 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. What do you notice here? We notice that x minus 2 is both on top and bottom, so we can cross it out. Then that becomes simply x plus 3 over x plus 2. Here, let's try again. Substitute. 2 plus 3, 5. 2 plus 2, 4. When you put it in, it is a value. So... How you solve this question is by factoring. All right, perfect. Now let's look at the yellow question, where limit as x approaches to 0, square root of x plus 4 minus 2 over x. In this case, we first can tell that it is an indeterminate question because you plug in 0 and you get 2 minus 2 divided by 0, and that's 0 over 0. In this case, we will apply what is called a conjugate, right? You multiply it by its conjugate on top and bottom. You see right here, square root of x plus 4 plus 2, right? The opposite sign. That is what a conjugate is. And when you do that, you see x plus 4 minus 4 over x times the square root of x plus 4 plus 2. In this case, something really important to remember is you never distribute the denominator. And why? You will see. So next, right? 4 minus 4, that's 0. So x on top and bottom still bottom. And since you did not distribute x and x cancels out, right? If you distribute it, then you might have never seen it, and it would just make the question so much more complicated for yourself. Since x over x is canceled, top is 1 now, right? So 1 over square root of x plus 4 plus 2. Plug in 0, let's see. 0 plus 4, 2 plus 2, 1 over that, and you get your answer, 1 over 4. All right, cool. Now let's take a look at our blue question. Limit as x approaches 2, 1 over x minus 1 over 2, all over x minus 2. In this case, what you will see is like a complex fraction, right? And what you would do is you will look for a kind of like a common denominator and multiply the whole thing. So in this case, we see it's x and 2. What is the common denominator? 2x, right? If you multiply by 2x, top will become 2 minus x, and the bottom will become 2x times x minus 2. You completely got rid of that mini fraction on top of the big fraction, right? In this case, let's see, 2x, 2 minus x over 2x times x minus 2. So how will we simplify that? Hmm, let's see. 2 minus x is actually just x minus 2, except you take out the negative, right? In this case, look at, look at us again. Don't distribute. Remember, do not distribute. And top and bottom, ooh, all right, cancel out. So easy, right? So then you get like negative 1 over 2x. Plug in the 2 again, negative 1 over 4. Easy. All right, guys, let's quickly go through 10 questions. Easy breezy. 
First, we see this question here. What do we always do first? I hope you said substitute. If you did, I am so proud of you, right? Let's see. So negative 2 squared, 4, okay, plus 8, and then minus 12. And on the bottom, we get 4 minus 4, right? What is that? 0 over 0. Okay, indeterminate, right? If you got a value, we would be done. So always substitute first. Then let's take a look. X squared on top, X squared on bottom. Mm, looks like we can't factor, right? Let's try that. So as limit X approaches negative 2, we do X minus 6 on top times X plus 2, right? That's how you factor. And on the bottom, X plus 2 times X minus 2. And what happens here? Lucky us, we see a common factor. Cancel that out. Let's try this now again. Limit X goes to, oh, we change color here. All right, X minus 2. Okay, perfect. Let's plug in negative 2 again. Let's see what happens. Negative 2 minus 6, negative 2, negative 2, right? And what is that, guys? Negative 8 over negative 4, and we get a number 2. See? Easy. This is a question where we factor, and let's try another one. Don't be tired. It's only the second question. So here, what do we do first? I really hope you said substitute, right? Okay, let's try that, right? 1 plus 0, yeah, we're going with green over 0. And what is that? 0 over 0. So let's proceed. And here we go. Mm, looks like it is a bit of a conjugate question, right? So let's multiply by its conjugate, right? Plus 1. Switch signs. And over here, top and bottom, same thing. And here we go. All right. So as we continue, what do we get on the top? We get 1 plus h minus 1. And on the bottom, what do we get? Do you remember? Do you remember what we talked about? What we talked about? Oh, uh, yeah. We do not distribute. So h times square root of 1 plus h plus 1. Perfect. And why? Let's take a look. 1 plus 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. And h, h, cancel that out, right? Yeah, let's continue. Limit as oh, h goes to 0. And we get... 1 over square root of 1 plus h plus 1. Now, let's try to substitute again. So you get square root of 1 plus 0 plus 1. And that's what? 1 half. Yay, we got our answer, right? So this question is a conjugate question. All right, question number three. We see that they are two different things. Like they're separate. Normally, we only have one fraction. So what we have to do first is always combine. And what do you notice here, right? So t squared plus t is actually t times t plus 1. And this is t, right? So we do common denominator. So let's go. Limit t goes to 0, t plus 1 on top, because we're multiplying this by t plus 1, right? So we can get the same as this. So t plus 1 over t times t plus 1. And minus 1 over t plus t plus 1. So this is still the same thing. We just kind of opened it up, right? And here we go. Combine that fraction. All right, we get 1 minus 1. That cancels out. Remember, we never distribute on the bottom. T and T cancel out. So what are we left with? T goes to 0. We get 1 over T plus 1. And let's try to plug that in. Right, 1 over 0 plus 1 is 1 over 1 and 1. There we go. We got an answer again. So how we do this is we always combine them into a single fraction, right? When you see them apart. And then we just solve. And factor, common denominator, right? You get the point. All right, guys, question number four. Hang tight. All right, let's see. Let's do, maybe let's do green again. All right, green color. So we see cosine x. Okay, trig function. As x approaches infinity. Huh, isn't that special? So we know what happens to cosine x as x approaches infinity? Let's take a quick look. You know, it goes like this. So what happens, right? It come, it actually oscillates, right? Cosine x oscillates. So, you know, when if you say cosine, you plug in infinity, you don't know what exactly is on top. Like, what is on top, right? And on the bottom, if you do infinity minus 4, it's still infinity. But, like, how do you do this question, right? Let's take a look. Take a close look. Grab out a pencil, some paper. Look if you can solve it. All right. I don't know. Could you do it? Let's see. So here we actually have to simplify it a little bit, right? 
And we, as you know, when we see that it goes to infinity, you always take the highest power on top and bottom. So in this case, cosine x and x squared, right? So if you do limit as x approaches infinity, cosine x over x squared, right? Okay, so let's simplify this. Let's simplify this a little bit. Limit x goes to infinity, we do cosine x, x times x minus 1. Sorry, 1 over x, right? And isn't that the same thing as x squared, right? x times x. So we see, plug this in again, infinity into each of these x's. But no, let's do this one first. Why? Because if you do 1 over infinity, what is 1 over infinity? If you are dividing 1 by an extremely big number, you get 0. So if, if this number multiplied by 0, then the whole thing is just 0. Right? Okay, I get this question was a little trickier, but you just have to manipulate it and see if you can get an answer. All right, question five, halfway there. Ooh, what do we see? An absolute value. Hmm, okay. Let's go with blue this time. All right. So we have to first get rid of this absolute value. So what are like the two cases, right? So let's do two cases. X minus one first, it's just going to be normal. X minus three, right? That's when X is greater than three. And second, it's going to be X minus one. I hope you guys still remember your absolute value, right? The second one's going to be negative x minus 3, except this time x is going to be less than 3. So here are your two choices, right? And you see that it's 3. And what happens at 3, right? You're approaching it from left and right. So in this case, you need to do limit as x approaches 3 plus, like from the right side, right? And limit as x approaches 3 minus from the left side. So when it approaches 3 from the right side, what is it, right? It's greater than 3. So then you write x minus 1 over x minus 3. And if it approaches it from the left side, isn't it less than 3, right? So you have to put in the bottom equation where it's negative x plus 3 right here. There you go, right? Okay, let's take a look. If it approaches from 3 to the right, from the right of 3, right, on top right here, we get a positive value. And what about 3 from the right side of 3? It's always greater than 3. So if it's a number always greater than 3 subtracted by 3, what is it? It's positive. All right, perfect. Next, let's take a look at the 3 minus from the left side. If it's always from the left side of 3, okay, it's still going to be positive on the top. And on the bottom, if it's less than 3, right, then, you know, inside here it's going to be negative. But you see a negative out there, so it's going to be a positive again, right? And like we said, if it's all positive, then you know the answer is positive. It's not, does not exist, right? If you have, like, negative over plus over here, then this does not exist. So it's going to be plus infinity. Yup, there you go. That's how we do this question. Question number six. All right, let's see what happens here. Hang tight, hang tight. So first, what do you do? Always substitute. Okay, so two squared minus four. Okay, so first two squared, right? Four minus eight minus 12, four minus four. Okay, bottom is 0. On the top, what is that right there, right? Isn't it negative 4 minus 12? It's actually negative 16 over 0. Guys, it's not 0 over 0. It's not indeterminate, right? So that's why you always have to substitute. So it means it is a number over 0. That means we have to do some sort of test from left and right because it's infinity. It's a type of infinity for sure. We know that, right? Or it does not exist. It's either plus or minus infinity or does not exist. Let's test it out. So first, right, let's do limit as x approaches 2 minus, right, from the left side. And then we do limit as x approaches from the right side, 2 plus. x minus 6, x minus 2. How do we get this, right? That is simplified, right? Because over here, you see, you get x plus 2 times x minus 6 on top and x plus 2 times x minus 2 on the bottom. And you cross out this, right? So this is the simplified version. That's what's happening here and here. So right here, it's also going to be x minus 6 over x minus 2. Cool. Let's plug in our values, right? If you're coming from the left side of 2, you're always less than 6. So if you are subtracting 6, you're going to turn out negative. So over here, you get negative. And then if you're always less than 2, you subtract by 2, you're going to be negative on the bottom. Okay, so over here, you get negative over negative. On the bottom, let's see, from the right side, right? 
Then on top, if you're off on the right side, look really close to two, really close to two. Then you get like, let's say three, three minus six, negative on top. On the bottom, let's say like three, right? You always pick one that's like closer. Three minus two, positive. Oh, what happened here, right? Right here, it is a positive infinity. Right here, it is a negative infinity. In this case, because of these two, they don't match. The answer is does not exist, right? When they are different, as they both approach two, one is going up, one is going down to the infinity. The limit does not exist. All right, here we go. Number seven. All right, we see it's going to infinity. So what we what do we do? Right, we take the largest power on the top and bottom. So limit as y goes to infinity, y squared over y squared. Huh, doesn't that cancel out? So the answer to this is 1, right? Really quick, really simple. For 8, let's see. Ooh, doesn't this look like a little bit of a conjugate question, right? But what do we do first? At this point, I really hope you said substitute because if you didn't, I'm disappointed. Okay, so let's see. Well, 1 minus Square root of 0 over 1 minus 0. Ah, uh, okay. Wait, see? It is not 0 over 0. It's actually a number. So the answer is 1 again, right? So this is why we always have to substitute. Because if you get a value, you're done. You're done with this question. All right, guys, number 9. We're in the home stretch here. We can do it. Okay, let's see. Oh, another infinity question. Okay, so... Maybe let's take a look. Let's substitute, right? If it's square root of infinity, it's still infinity. It's really big, right? And if you minus infinity, you basically get infinity minus infinity. Isn't that what we saw as the indeterminate form? All right, so let's see. What can we do here? Hmm, maybe we can factor. Let's take a look. Limit x goes to infinity if you take out square root x1 minus square root x. Okay, so let's try to plug infinity back in again. If you get infinity times 1 minus, if you take a square root of infinity, right, it's still infinity. Okay, okay. So, you continue. Infinity. What is 1 minus infinity? If infinity is a really big number, 1 is subtracting it, you actually get negative infinity, right? Negative number. So, in this case, if you multiply infinity by negative infinity, what do you get? Right? A negative infinity. Because negative times positive is always negative answer is negative infinity. Isn't that actually simple? You just gotta look at how to simplify. All right, guys, number 10. Last question. Let's finish this off strong. Grab your pencil or paper. Try this question on your own. Really easy question, right? Let's wrap this up. All right, I really hope you have tried, right? Oh, we're gonna get orange. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, so when you see infinity question, what do you do first? All right, don't say substitute, okay? If it's infinity, we always take the largest power. So right, right here, negative 4x to the 7th. Okay, cool. So let's plug negative infinity in here. So if you do limit as x approach, as t approaches, oh, okay, that's looking a little bad. Let's erase. All right, as t approaches negative infinity, you take negative 4t to the 7th. Right? So negative infinity to the seventh. What is that? That is still a negative infinity number, right? Negative to the odd is negative. Negative to the even is positive. So if you still have negative 4 times negative infinity, does it matter that it's a 4? No, any number multiplied by infinity is like not significant enough to compare. So it's simply going to be positive infinity. Just bigger and bigger. Negative times negative, positive. All right, that is the last question. I'm so proud of you guys if you have listened this far. You can do it. More practice and you will be all good. All right, that's the end of the video, right? Go in the comment section, comment something you liked about this video, any question you like or any content you want to see in the future, right? Click that like, smash that subscribe button, and click that notification bell, right? It's Miss Stem Tutor here. Let's get that 100.